Hello YouTube, B3 here back with another kicking action figure review. Today's review is over my newest Pacific Rim figure. It is the Pacific Rim Axe Head Kaiju from NECA. Yeah, this is a deluxe figure and also a concept figure. Uh, that's just because Axe Head Kaiju doesn't appear in the movies or anything. He's the uh, concept version of what became Trespasser. Because, you know, he had the concept art and stuff and concept art's different than the final project for Trespasser. Uh, this is really kind of a filler figure. Just, I guess, I, I don't, the reason I say that is because, you know, they're releasing it before all the, all the new figures of this new package and stuff, because the last one before this was Scunner, and he had the old packaging. Yeah, all these kaiju are going to be deluxe figures now, just because they, they have to be so big to scale. But yeah, Kaiju Axe Head, really dope figure. I am, well, you know, from the looks of it, I really love my Trespasser, so I'm guessing I'll really like this guy also. I can already tell just by looking at him that he has a few detail problems, but nothing uh, I can do. But yeah, I wanted to show you the new Pacific Rim packaging, just for, you know, giggles. Uh, as you can see, it's got, you know, Kaiju Axe Head down there. It's like this big box packaging instead of the clamshell we had before, and there's some of the concept art. Uh, note that there's only one eye on the concept art. We'll get some more of that. And then there's a window of the figure. And it says concept art, Pacific Rim and stuff. It's the top concept figure. It's got a little place where you can hang it. So retail places can hang it. You can hang it on your wall if you're a MOC collector. And then you got a picture of the figure on the side. I think the final product looks a little different than that, actually. Yeah, it does. And Pacific Rim down there. The same size, that size the same, you know. And then you got Max Head Kaiju back here. Doesn't give a category or anything, but Trespasser didn't have a category. Uh, that's what I hear. And the other figures at the bottom. Leatherback, Deluxe Knife Head. I have the Battle Damage one. They say they're going to release a regular one also. I might get it, might not. Eh. And Trespasser. And of course, Axe Head. I have all those. Warner Brothers, Legendary, NECA, Real Toys, etc. There's the bottom. And top windows. So yeah, let's bust this guy out of packaging. All right, here he is, YouTube. Axe Head Kaiju in the flesh, or in the plastic. Yeah, he's a neat little figure, as I said, mostly just like Trespasser, with some differences. Enough differences to make him worth buying, I guess. If you can get him for a decent price. I paid about 30 bucks for him, for him excuse me, 30 shipped, which I was fine with. Except the very next night right after I did that, and I just had, I've had like an awful week, you guys, and this just made it even worse, especially to a collector like me. But, uh, yeah, back on Amazon, and he was eighteen ninety nine with free shipping. And I was like, oh, if I'd only waited one night, I could have got him for eighteen ninety nine. Jesus. I've never got a kaiju that cheap for a Pacific Rim. And I was... Wow, I was pissed about that, but in a few hours that deal was gone. People jumped on that, let me tell you. But, uh, yeah, you know, and then it went right back up to exactly what I paid for him, so. I guess I can't be too mad, but still, you know, god dang it. Pissing me off. But I don't really regret paying what I paid for him, I just kind of regret my timing. But yeah, I said Kaiju, really cool, uh. First, I'm going to show you his articulation, which isn't really different from Trespassers at all. Like, not at all. As you can see, he's got, uh, he's got his head movements here. You know, you can move all the way around, up, down, side to side. Got, you know, lots of good movement there. Up and down on the arm, forward and back. And you got a rotation here on the elbow. Also got up and down on it. And then you kind of got all this different movement in his claw here. And that's on both those arms. And the inner arms got some rotation. You also got forward and back on them. Nothing on the elbow, but you got a good bit of movement on the wrists. And then you've got this waist joint here. Also, you know, you can move the legs all the way around, in and out, you, know, you can twist them up and down. Lots of great movement there. Knee bend and rotation. Uh, you got a lot of great movement on that foot also. Very poseable down here on the legs. 
and also bindi wire in the tail. You know, NECA loves their bindi wires. So, there we go. Yeah, Axe Head Kaiju, looking good, looking good. Uh, speaking of looking good, let's get into some detail and paint. Yeah, um, it seems like before they decided on their kind of luminescent lines on the kaiju, they had these dots instead. I think the lines look much better. They're more prominent, which makes them feel like part of the design more. These would have just been weird, I think. But uh, yeah, I really like the lights on the kaiju in Pacific Rim. Very neat. Now, now, first point of detail, you know, earlier I mentioned about how the the concept really only has one set of eyes. This guy has two because he uses the Trespasser head sculpt. So this is a little nitpicky thing, but it would have really helped him feel more like a different kaiju if you would have just changed up everything possible. Uh, yeah, see, so he's got he's got two sets of eyes instead of one, like on the box. But uh. Yeah, you know, he's got lots of greens and blues on him. Greens and blues are a big thing. And those eyes really do look like they're glowing. They have this little orange on the outsides, but he's got like this this color all the way down through the tail. The tail looks a lot like Trespassers also. It's got a brown nub on the end here. Lots of green, lots of green. A different carapace on his back than Trespasser. And they sculpted this broken horn to just make him feel a little more unique. That was a good little touch there. Uh, they gave him Scunner's claws. These are the claws that Scunner has. Not trespasser, so yeah. And they also gave him these blades coming out of his legs here, which trespasser doesn't have either. I like this blue glow in the scale on the top of the legs here. That looks really cool. I like his green feeties. He's got lots of detail on the bottom of his feet. You know, his tail helps him stand. And I've got him in some poses where his tail's not touching the ground and he stands just fine too, so he can stand really well by himself. Doesn't really need that or anything. But yeah, he's got lots of different shades of all the colors all over him, as you can see. And he's ju he's just painted really, really well. Very, very nice. Love the, uh, the teeth. They look like the teeth on the creature from uh, the Feast or Primitive or something. I also forgot to mention jaw articulation, I believe. The jaw articulates. And he's got lots of great nasty pinkness in there. Look at all that. They just have a little bits of paint, like there's, the paint doesn't go all the way back in that one section in the mouth. You can see that black, and I've got like this weird, really light green section, and some scuffing on the front, even though it wasn't really touching anything. So, I mean, that's that, but what you gonna do when you get kaiju? So, yeah, very cool looking figure. How about we get into some size comparisons? All right, everyone, now here's Axe Head compared to some other deluxe kaiju figures from Pacific Rim. Here on the left, we have Scunner Kaiju, which is the one that was released before Axe Head a little while ago. Now, you can still get him for release price, which isn't bad, you know. 25 bucks for these guys isn't bad at all. They're very big, so very, very good price. But, uh, yeah, you know, they're about the same height. I guess that's fine, because... Uh, here on the right you have Trespasser, obviously, so you can see the kind of the differences between the two of them. And, you know, Trespasser was this weird thing where he wasn't, he's not in a category, but he's about as big as a category three or four. Which I don't really get, I don't understand the reasoning behind that. I guess he was kind of like a scout maybe, and that's why he wasn't a category. But they never categorized him later, which I thought was weird. But, you know, he's about the same size as Trespasser. Trespasser's uh, posed forward a little bit more because I just pulled him out of a display. But they are really about the same height. So it's all good with them. And then Scunner, you know, is about as big as they are. But he's one of the biggest Category 4s. And, you know, whatever. I think they look cool together and that's all that really matters. No one, please don't comment like, whoa. You know, Trespasser's this many meters exactly, and Scunner's this many meters exactly, and so if they aren't, like, this far apart in scaling, then it's not correct. I don't care about the precision of it, alright? That's too annoying, that's too stupid. Most of these things are never going to scale perfectly. Uh, I mean, Bandai can barely scale up with themselves. I don't really expect NECA to do it. 
but they've done a better job of scaling than, you know, you would think. I think these three look great together. That's all that matters. Now here's Axe Head of some Jaegers, also from NECA, of course. Uh, here on the left we have the Battle Damage Gypsy Danger from Series 2, and here on the right, Cherno Alpha. Uh, I gave the specific series for the Gypsy because very soon we are going to have another Battle Damage Gypsy Danger that's based off his scuffle with Knife Head, and I believe this Battle Damage Gypsy Danger is from the scuffle in Hong Kong. So, well I think Hong Kong was the city they fought Atachi and Leatherback in anyways. Pretty sure. I've only seen Pacific Rim a handful of times. And I'm not really paying attention to the city's names while I'm watching it. But, I think it looks fine with them. Uh, this Gypsy Danger is obviously undersized. That's why they're making two more versions of him. Another regular version and new battle damage. But, you know, it doesn't matter. I still think they look cool together. And then Cherno, I think, Trespath looks great with Cherno also. Cherno's my favorite Jaeger figure right now. Uh, only one more to go, one more series, until we have all the figures from the movie. And then we're going to start just getting into the lore, I guess. Because this line's doing pretty well. I'm very happy that a kaiju line's doing so well in America. But, uh... Yeah, so Gypsy Danger, Cherno Alpha, looking good with Axe Head. Now here's Axe Head with some other super articulated kaiju, this time from the Godzilla franchise. Here on the left we have the NECA 94 Godzilla, who I don't really think scales up well with Trespasser at all. Godzilla, I would want Godzilla to be bigger than Trespasser, he is the king after all. Same with the SH Monster Art Space Godzilla here on the right. Uh, also too small, I don't think they look real cool with him, but... I think my... 8-inch Banpresto Godzilla is a decent height with them. You know, he's a little bigger, but um, as you see, these 8-inch figures, you know, Godzilla's bigger, but not so big that he could just, like, decimate him. It seems like it would actually be a fight. But the figure I really want to go with these guys is the NECA 24-inch Godzilla with sound from the new movie. Whew, I gotta get me that sucker. He's expensive, but I gotta get him. I gotta get him to go with my Pacific Remis. And I will, eventually, but... You know, he's not too great with these guys. I actually think the Ultramen look kind of cool with... The Pacific Rim figures, both my Ultra Hero series and my Ultra Axe, which I'm not gonna get out right now because I'm actually working on a project with them, so they need to kind of stay where they are right now. But... Yeah, they're very, very cool. I think the Ultra... Because I like it when my Kaiju are bigger than my Ultraman, and they're bigger than the Ultraman, so I think it's actually really cool scaling. But, yeah, you know, these specific Rim figures probably aren't going to scale up well with your 6-inch regular vinyl stuff, because, I mean, they got a game right here, too, and it's like, eh. You know, whatever. But, you know, he scales up great with the Pacific Rim stuff, and that's really what matters. So what are my final thoughts on the NECA Deluxe Pacific Rim... Axe Head Kaiju figure? Well, he's pretty dang cool. Uh, I gotta say, you know, if you have Trespasser and you just want to save your money for the next figures like the Jaegers or Atachi or something, you know, then, then save your money. I mean, unless you're kind of a completist for this line, I guess you don't really need this guy. Or, I, I mean... No offense to him, he's still a good figure, it's just he he doesn't feel new. I don't feel like I've bought a new figure. I feel like I bought this figure a while back. Because I pre-ordered uh, Trespasser and uh, Battle Damage Knife Head. But this guy, you know, I just got him shortly after he came out. I mean, he's not really, not really anything special. He's a cool figure, just there's nothing new about him. There's nothing really unique. I mean, he's a concept figure, so I guess that's unique, but I mean, it's mostly the same sculpt as Trespasser, just with a little bit of bonus and different paint. So, you know, all in all, I'm going to give this guy three out of five stars. I mean, if they would have just made one of the other kaiju, it might have been four. I'm sure they would have done a great job, but I just don't feel like I, I don't I don't feel like this was a necessary figure. I mean, Trespasser is my favorite uh, kaiju design-wise. 
So, you know, I like this figure anyways. And I'm not bashing this figure. It's a cool figure. It's just... It doesn't feel new. I don't... I just don't feel like I bought a new figure. I feel like I paid 30 bucks for a figure I already have, almost. And, uh... It's like... I feel like I would if I collected the Predator line, pretty much, because most of the Predators are exactly the same, except with a few tweaks. Now they're looking more and more unique each time, but still, you know what I mean. So, yeah, that's it. Three out of five stars. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below. Links to Facebook, Twitter. Follow you back on Twitter uh, as soon as we can. Remember to follow Cap. Just check out lots of channels. We could use your guys' help funding uh, the Slender Happening and stuff and etc. Uh, I know you guys are like, well, if, if, if you want to do that, well, why do you keep buying figures and making these reviews? Why don't you just make the Slender Happening? Well, I'm a partner, so this figure is probably going to pay for itself. I mean, my Kaiju reviews actually get a lot of views, so this guy will pay for himself probably before the month is out. But, yeah, so we can use your help with that. You can check out the Swagfoot fundraiser videos and the Slender Happening fundraiser videos if you want to help donate to some of our more creative projects. Uh, we got lots of us working on it, including Jimmy Dan 93 You can check out his channel also. But we just got a lot of cool stuff, lots of other channels. Links in the description below. If they don't work, tell me, because sometimes YouTube likes to be a little bitch and not make my links work. So, that's it, you guys. As I said, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all later.